Asema tehiti nane mori taba Beni taba kagodi taba ama ai Yo mupu nini gosu mare ke kabonzo nganga ifunu ni Au nga miyu ya galin kule mbaka fuza miwela Ahe Ahe oh 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 Ahe Ahe oh Ahe ila ke gam Aida na ke gam Nkefu yaluma Ahe ahe da kukuzalo Lai apa atanga Atanga dana eni yalum Inku zinti pao Sankana na kume nge lago te Ahe oh Ahe Ahe Thank you, yen.com.gh. <laughs> Tell us about that song you were singing when we were going into this interview. The title of that song is um, First Fool. What, what is it? First Fool. Yeah. Uh, it's a broken heart song. Throw back to when I was broken hearted. <laughs> so, um, I think everyone has been broken hearted one way or the other. And uh, I was saying that, okay, I've been fooled once and I've been fooled twice. Never again. I will not be the third fool, so I can't be fooled for the third time. So, <laughs> so what, what language is that, and then and then how did you write that music? Um, that's my local dialect called Kusal. Uh, I'm a Kusasi, but we speak the Kusal language. And then writing, I think I I'm very fluent in my local dialect than any other language, and I feel very comfortable writing and singing in that because uh, anytime I sing three, the three people are always on my nerves that ah, you want to know, yeah, I have a young kind of thing. And it, like, I speak three very well, but not, um, when I go to Kumasi and I start singing, they're like, ah, you know, they, they own the language so they can tell. But with my language, I speak it really well. Even when I go to my village, um, those around always, you know, get confused as in, if I live there or I live in Accra, but thanks to my dad, like he he won't uh, he won't just let you grow up without being able to speak the Kosa language. So I write in my local dialect because I think I'm I'm able to express myself really well in it, and it's very sweet also, very um, rhythmic, and you know, it's 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 very sweet in music. So I think that's the best language for my music. Right, let me see. Tell us about yourself, where you grew up, and then how you started music. Um, I was born in Tema, and I think at the age of two, we moved to Ashaiman. And I'm in my early 30s, so I spent almost all my life in Ashaiman. So I grew up in Ashaiman. I attended um, St. Peter's Methodist, the morning and afternoon school, you know. And then from there, I continued to Ashaiman Secondary School. And then from there to University of Professional Studies, where I did my first degree in marketing, and then to the University of Ghana, currently where I'm almost done with my MPhil in performing arts education. And um, music, I started singing as a kid, not professionally. You know, uh, when you go to church as a young kid, you are either pushed to the Sunday school uh, singing or dancing or. Bible kind of competition, those kind of things. So I found myself in the children's choir and we were just singing, we were just singing some, you know, your parents want you to do something so they could have time. So they just push you there and then they are in the main service doing their own thing. So we we're just singing, singing, singing. And then um, after senior secondary school, I took part in Stars of the Future. And then fortunately or unfortunately, <laughs> I wasn't selected. And uh, myself and some other girls that weren't selected, like we became friends. So I got a call from this girlfriend that I met at the Stars of the Future audition who wasn't picked as well. And then she was like, let me see, are you interested to do uh, backing vocals for Becca? So I asked her, like, who is Becca? And she said, this new girl who likes to do one knicker, one trouser, you know, one leg short and one leg. I'm like, okay, because by then I had completed secondary school and then my dad was like, go and find yourself some work to do. And then every time he comes, he's like, are you still home? Won't you go and find? So I was like, am I going to be paid? And she was like, yeah. I'm like, yes, 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 I'll do it. So I got a call from Kiki Bansen. And then I went to uh, a 
I think I went for the rehearsal a day after and then um, that was how it started for me professionally. And when I got there, I realized that what I've been doing way back in the church, um, it wasn't the same. Even though the raw talent was there, but I needed to learn a lot of things, dynamics, you know, and a whole lot, how to sync with the band and as a background singer, your levels and the lead singing, you know, all of that. So um, that was when I met my band, Patch Bay Band. So I was Patch Bay since then. I learned and then um, it wasn't only Becca. As time went on, I, I, I had the opportunity to work with most of the big acts in Ghana, Samini, Sarko, The Stone Boy, Amanzaba, Rex Omar, Rocky Dawuni, um, a lot of them, and some international acts as well, traveled with the band, performed, and you know. So um, that was how it started. So when I decided to I felt I was ready. I'd always had the plan to do solo, but um, I wasn't in a rush. I knew I had to learn and also get my degree because when you have degrees, it gives you options at a point in time when you think you're not making too much for music. You could, you know, add other businesses and then you be comfortable. I don't want to be the kind of artist that I'll always be depending on my music to make a life. Okay, so which, how many years, how many years did you, did you, did you you know, do backing vocalists and then when did you, which year did you begin to say, okay, let me, let me go solo and then do my thing? Um, I think, um, I've been doing that for about six years. I wasn't doing only backing. Uh, at a point when the band is supposed to perform alone at parties or certain functions, I do lead singing. So I was like a lead singer for the band, like the frontliner for the band. And then when we are backing artists, yes, I do background for them. And then I, I launched my solo career last year. So before then, uh, I'd been recording and then all of that, you know, trying to test the waters and all of that. So I had a direction I wanted to go. But you as an individual having a direction, you should think about your market as well. So um, my first releases were actually to test the market. And then I think after I found my direction and then I was able to position myself well and then really prepare. <laughs> For the Brighter Side album, which um, I, I launched uh, last weekend. Okay, what, 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 so, what kind of music were you doing when you were testing the waters? Was it just? It was still. It wasn't. It wasn't something different what from. Um, it was Afro pop. Yes, it wasn't different from what I have on the album. Just that the album is more matured. Like it's really a heavyweight um, album. You listen to the sound, the production quality. It's not. It's 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 no joke. <laughs> What have you learned from the years of being a backing vocalist, from the artist, that now that you are a solo artist, you will use that to, to help your brand? Um, I think I've learned to, to respect management, to respect the media, because um, they help make you, uh, believe it or not, because if I record my music, how do I get it to my, my target market? It's through the media online, um, TV, radio, prints, and then all of that. So um, I've learned to have a very good relationship with media personnel, and then also learning, continuous learning, because as an artist, you, you are never okay. There's always something new you have to learn. And um, even my own music, I had to learn, and the band even had to help me learn my own music that I recorded for performance. So as an artist, I've learned, you know, you have to respect management because um, you can't do everything by yourself. And I have some, some artists take pride in saying that, yeah, I manage myself, I do this, this, and this for myself. I think it's not right, you know, because the whole music um, fraternity is really huge. And then if you want to break it down, I mean, every, you need a lot of people to handle things for you and all of that. So I've learned to really respect people around you, people working for you, doing things for you. It could be anybody from the top to blue. So um, I think it was a great experience with the band. And I, I really, um, I'm very proud that I went through through that training before standing out as a solo artist. So uh, it was great. What, 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 what record label are you on now and then how did you how did you get to that? I'm not on any record label currently. I don't think there's even one in Ghana. Trust me. Um, Why? There's no record label in Ghana, I'm telling you. 
A record label is supposed to be taking care of distribution, promotions, and then uh, bookings like agencies, they should have promoters all over. And then, you know, you don't have to work. You as an artist, just go to the studio, record with your music director or whoever is, uh, you know, guiding you with your recordings and the way it should go. And that is it. You don't think about which radio station is playing your music, which um, booking agency is booking you in Nigeria or Europe, America. No. Record level, that's all of that. Your CDs, music, sales, everything. And we don't have that in Ghana. And um, do you want me to explain further or do you have any questions to that? No, so, so, so you, are, you are not an in management? I'm, I'm, well, my management, I won't say it's a manager, we are a team working together. So everyone has roles to play. So me as an artist, I have my role to play and then my management each and like, you know, we are a huge team that we are all working together. So how do you call the, 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 the so-called record label? If you are saying that there are no record labels. So I, didn't, I didn't even mention any so name. I didn't call any the, 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 the teams that we see manage artists and their brand names, how, how do you tell I think, I think they are management teams or management groups. No. Tell us about your, your album, Brighter Side. What, what came into, what, what went into the, 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 the production of that album? Brighter Side, it took me for over a year to work on that particular album because of um, what I wanted to achieve. Um, I wouldn't say because it took me over a year that makes it the best or that makes it a good album. Some people are very magical. They could work like uh, an album out within a month it all depends on what you want to achieve and then the kind of album you want to produce. Uh, Brighter Side album, I think almost all the songs were produced live. And then producing one live music, you need about seven instrumentalists to play on it. So now, me, the artist, plus the engineer, and the other seven instrumentalists. I am ready today, I want to record. The engineer says, okay, you can come. You call the guitarist, oh, I have a session, I can't make it. So I'll make it tomorrow. I ask the engineer, he goes like, tomorrow, another artist is here, I can't. So, every day you have to work in a way that you can get all the parties that you want to work in the city at that time available. And it's not easy organizing people to do what you want for you. And then, after all of that, I have to travel to do the mastering and the mix and I don't have control over the studio because the studio have been booked you know and you know how these white people work they go with their time and schedule so we also have to adapt to it that way so it took me some time and because we wanted a particular sound we had to wait on the people that we believe can give us the kind of output that we are looking for and then why the title brighter side was um, that brighter side song inspired all the other songs on the album and then um, I wrote that song in December 2017 and then right after I recorded that song two days later I had a medical condition that uh, got me at the hospital for like almost a month and little did I know that was the song that was going to be keeping me you know giving me hope, giving me, you know, uh, uh, courage, motivation. So anytime I was crying, laying on my hospital bed crying, and then I couldn't understand how all of a sudden, you know, this condition just came overnight and they told me it was an emergency and I had to be. So anytime I wanted to cry, that was a song that keeps ringing in. I'm like, ah, so I was singing this song for who? Was I singing it for myself or did I, was I writing it knowing that something of this was going to happen. So I almost gave up in music after I had that condition. But anytime I, 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 I think of that song, it, it gives me hope and you all of that. So that, that, that right. I wish you would understand, but you understand <laughs> because it's in my local dialect. Okay. Sabere go kati yang benin kotomi katam yetini do winni kaposu so um what i just sang means that uh, we as humans, we always like to complain over everything. 
forgetting that the things that we are crying or praying for, it could have been worse. And actually, somebody wishes to be in our shoes as, as we are now, as the situation is. So just look up to God, have faith, keep pushing, and then everything will be fine. That's your favorite song on the album? Um, I wouldn't say that's my favorite song, but that song gets me really emotional. What's your favorite on the album? My favorite is the one that is not people's favorite, which is called Zahanga Dreams. Okay. <laughs> it's my favorite because um, um, I got inspired to write that song. I don't know how to say it. Um, the inspiration to write that song came about one morning in my village, my father's room, when I was standing there through the windows and then looking at the scenery and everything far away. I just started getting ideas and then, you know, the birds and the sheep, you could see them eating grasses and all of that. So I just started singing about nature and then how beautiful everything around is. And it gives hope. You know, you see those things, it gives you hope and then it makes me feel like the big dreams I have they are capable of coming into reality. You talked about your father. Does your family support your music career? Because you, you talked about your degree, now you're doing the field and then... Yeah, that's very uh, interesting. That okay, with my family, um, from the beginning, there was no support. There was no support and then, um, well, my dad is no more. May his soul continue to rest in perfect peace. And um, I started actually singing with Mary Nansa and then uh, as, a, as a young girl so we follow her for gigs and then we we're not getting paid but I was so excited doing that and then my parents were like I shouldn't follow her I should stay at home learn and then all of that but um, I think there was something inside of me that even me I was on away because anytime they tried to stop me I was like okay and the next day I'll ask my friends, so where is the next gig? And they tell me it's here. So I always take my school back and then tell them I was going to campus to learn. And I put my the band choir uniform inside my bag. And then I meet my friends and I join the bus and we go. So one time we went to Odumase and we didn't come early. So around 10 p.m. I started crying. And they asked me what I'm like, today my dad will kill me because I told them I was going to learn. So when we got back to the town, Ashaiman, and one of my friends that said, he is also a, a parent, so he's taking me to my parents to explain to them that I didn't go to a bad place, I actually went to sing, so they should be proud and all of that. And I was like, okay. So the man led me home and then my parents, my dad, and they were sitting at the gate. <laughs> and then when we got there, and they saw the man, and I was just hiding behind the man, and then the man greeted and the man explained, and the man begged. They're like, oh, don't beat me. They are very happy that he even brought me. They won't beat me. And I was crying because I knew they would beat me. <laughs> so the man left. And then I knew, they told me to go and sleep. And I knew that the sleep, it was Cain that was going to wake me up. And then lo and behold, it happened. They beat me. And then the next day I had, you know, all those marks all over. So I went to school and I was crying. You know, my mates were like, what happened to you? What was, and you know, the moment you try to explain, they'll start laughing, you know, uh, SHS. They're like, hey, whoop, you a normal bow. And then all of that. So I cried and I vowed to myself never to follow Mary Gansi again. And then I forgot and I followed again. And that time there was an auntie of mine who was at that program. So that auntie go home earlier before I go home. And as usual, I changed my, my clothes before coming, the books were in my bag. And she was like, oh, Madam Obano to you, pa. And the program, I'm like, oh, my God, I'm going to marry you. I'm like, me, me, who me you? I'm going to be out. And the mom like, ah, and you, and you're going to be out, papa, papa, I'm going to be out to you. And I denied. So my parents got confused, and I told them that I'm not the one who, I'm not the one, and they, they believed me. You know, so I was living a double-faced life. I was a different person at home, and then when I stepped out, you know, I was a different person. And um, at a point, when I completed secondary school, and then I, I, I was waiting, and I got that offer from Becca. They were not too happy, but I told my dad that I'll also work and make money, and then he would be ashamed. And he was laughing because he knew I would go and come back and ask him for money. So what I did was that I was going to buy forms, and then save money to pay my fees and prove to them that um, what they don't want me to do, I'm making profit out of it and then I'm bettering my life. So I only brought him the admission forms and he asked me how much I'm like, I've paid. And then that was, that was the beginning of when 
they started supporting me because he realized that okay after all she she's focused and then she wants to feather because i was home waiting for him to to uh, buy me funds but he didn't so i started singing and i saved money and i did that so that was when they started supporting me but even when people tell them that oh your daughter can sing they're like mm, okay like you know they just can't be bothered <laughs> They, they were just proud that I was in school and everything was happening. And before he died, you know, he was really in support of what I was doing. And now my mom and my sisters, they are all proud of me and they give me their support anytime, any day. I think they are my biggest fans. Okay. Uh, with the media, do you think Ghanaian media is supporting upcoming artists like you? <laughs> some. Yeah, some some are, and then um, well, I can't I can't speak much for them because um, the media they also have their schedule, they run and all of that. Um, as an upcoming artist, I can't just sit at home and release music and then just assume that the media should support me if I don't make a move. There are some moves I made and then I didn't get support. And there were some too I made moves and then I got support. So some are really supportive and then some too, they just can't be bothered about who you are. What, what do you think the media should be doing to support uh, coming out? Well, I think the media should, should support good content because um, it's the media that uh, will be able to push Ghana music far before we the artists can also do it because as an artist if i'm working hard working hard and i don't get the media to be tweeting about me talking about me writing about me saying things about because some people um outside ghana depend on uh, the media information from the feed information from the media so if the media is writing good things about me or spreading good information about me it will also get them interested to also engage in me as an artist so um it's just a humble plea that negativity it sells but for how long for how long can you be relevant with negative news you know so um well it's a strategy but with me i think i have a lot of things that can really sell beyond negativity because look at me i look pretty even if i'm covered all up you know i look pretty and um that can sell me that is one and then two i think i'm a good singer i won't say i'm the best singer but i'm i'm a good singer it can sell me and then also i think i have good songs um thankfully to god i write good songs and then my songs are very well produced and then uh, the sound quality i have one of the best uh sound sounds like my music so i think they can sell me and i'm a hard-working artist i i don't i don't sleep and i i don't always depend on people to do stuff for me what i have to do as an artist i do it as in uh, working on myself working out and then having vocal training sessions and always trying to work on my pieces that i started you know so those things can sell me just that it's as um, a slower pace as compared to the negativity that sells. You can use, you know, that negative news to sell, but how long can it keep you there? You know, but I want to be evergreen. I want to be in the system. Where, where so I think I'm, I'm tired. Where do you see your music, your brand, your album going in, 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 in the shortest short possible time? Going far. <laughs> going far. Yeah, going really far that's that's my aspiration but um i don't have control over everything so i'm doing my best as as human what i can do i'm really working hard at it but the rest is left to the third parties that can help push it to where it can really get to when 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 you're not you're, people haven't started writing more about you but then when you wake up and you see and news about you that is that is that is negative or it's not true what, 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 what would be your first reaction my first reaction i'll just laugh <laughs> i'll just laugh because i i can't stress over um some cheap writings or cheap news or anything and you know the more you try to defend those news or the more you try to to attack or you know to fight or ask i mean it's a waste of energy so instead of use that energy to be writing more or to be doing something else so if people prefer to write negative stuff about me i don't i don't think um it's worth my energy or my time to chase 
or attack them or trying to defend or trying to uh, explain no, no no i don't need to explain myself where can Daniels get your music your album and then your final words to, to, to your fans my album can be purchased on um, itunes amazon visa spotify um a lot like almost all the online platform and then my social media handles is let me see music on instagram let me see music on twitter or twitter let me see music on what's the other one facebook yes and then my website is uh, let me see music.com and then youtube let me see music yeah what, 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 what are your last words? my last words is um well i have released my my first album and then i I'm just asking for more support, you know. Those that think that I'm doing well, they should spread the news, spread the news, and then they, they should write good stuff about me, and then, you know, encouraging stuff that can help grow my brand, enhance my brand, not stuff that will tarnish <laughs> the brand. So I'm, 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 I'm asking for more support for my brand. Okay, finally, uh, we want to find out, have you ever been uh, requested of to give sex in exchange for a favor in this industry? Yeah, several times when I started. That was when I was a background singer. And then, I mean, I, I, got, I got a lot of opportunities that, uh, to, to, to come into the limelight years back. And other people offered me, um, they were like, I should do dancehall, reggae dancehall, and then that's when I can be a hit. And then some people also told me, no, do songs like this artist. They'll mention like some about three artists for me that try to do songs like this artist. We can push you by you yourself of music. Oh, gosh, if you choose to do it, I record you. And I'm like, ooh, me, I record you. So, you know, I just, I was just like, okay. So all these things just um, inspired me. And the thing about me is, you know, the things that break other people down, me, it doesn't break me down. It provokes me to work harder because I always feel like, oh, okay, so this person doesn't believe in me. Well, that is good. That means that I need to work extra harder for them to see that, oh, after all, this girl, whatever we thought about her or how we saw her, that wasn't it. So now we are seeing the real picture. So with me, things that really you know, people say harsh, harsh things. People have said harsh things, thrown things at my face, but I just take them all and I just go, hmm. then I sit, I pray, and then, you know, I try to work around it. So I've had that office several times, and then someone told me that, hey, me no to me, you do my brand, me no one change for now. And I asked why, open me did that, and I say, music, and then say, eh, hey, me shut down, poor, but I'm going to bad, sir, because I'm not one change for Yet, not a plan, yeah. Over Kona, oh boy, be, oh boy, be or shabby, be honest, but I say, man, yeah, man, yeah, none of my yard planning, no one ever can say, no kind of my dream, who but means me, yeah. And I bear any master, Mohana, oh boy, be animal. I'm like, no, they won't mean you me. They go like, eh, send me their me own plan, it's the moon, do I may? I want you. So I was like, okay, me that's who they may dream, and then I, I, I never get back because even, uh, <laughs> you know. As an artist, I don't know, my, my immediate manager, he is my personal manager or my road manager. We should have a business manager. So if we have a business manager, is that business manager also going to date me? Or what? It's just that in Ghana, your manager is your everything. He's your producer, he's your um, executive producer, he's your road manager, he's your personal manager, he's your boyfriend, he's your brother, I mean, everything. But come on, I'm educated a little. And I've been in the background a little. I've seen what other female artists have been through. And all those things were part of the things I learned. So I'm too enlightened to, to allow someone to give me this cheap offers. You know, I, I, I knew, I knew I would have been, I could have been big in the past, but I didn't want the situation whereby I'll be big and all over. And then within some two, three years, you are nowhere to be found, no. I prefer to grow naturally. I prefer to grow with my brand. And then when I get, you know, I'm not competing. My style of music is not a kind of hit that a hit here three months now, a year right? no. Take songs way back, good songs, Today you can still sing them, dance to them, Amaziba Menyum Rexuma. We can still dance to Kalogo Yede and all of that. So that's the direction I'm going through. So I'm, I was never, I was never bothered about all those offers that oh I'm losing a deal or I'm doing no no. I prefer to save small 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 and go and pay and then record at my own time at my own pace. So I meet people who really believe in me and are serious, you know, to help push me. That's it. So those offers there, Charlie.
Thank you so much for coming, Lamisi. Oh, thank you for having me too. Thank you for having me too.